Greetings YouTube, Airborne 80. And uh, you know, here's what happened. Uh, it's the day after um, the, uh, President Trump was shot. And uh, I've kind of avoided a lot of the post uh, event stuff um, for just my own reasons. I've got some issues that I'm dealing with with uh, a friend of mine that, that, that necessitated some time. And, uh, you know, mentally I needed to take a step back. Um, you know, at this point in my life, it really comes down to self-preservation sometimes. You know, man, person needs to know what they can handle. And you don't want to get all spun out of control and get all stressed out. So, you know, sometimes I just say fuck it and I uh, play frisbee with the dogs and I pretend like the world is not the way it is. And uh, just take a break, you know, and I advise everybody to do that whenever possible. But I turned on a YouTube channel and just never heard of this guy, no offense, but I, I get the feeling he might be an MMA fighter or commentator. I, I don't know. But I got about uh, five minutes into his video and thought, you know what, I'm going to make a video. You know, this is just how my mind works. I'm not sure what I want to say, but I'm going to throw something out there. Uh, by the way, this guy wrote it down. His name is, where did I write it? Oh, so the YouTube channel's name is Jesse on Fire, J E S. S E J E S S E Jesse on fire. And for all I know, everybody in the world knows this guy except me, but you know, I just don't know the dude about five minutes into it. I'm like, I love this dude. This guy is, he's speaking. When I say my language, he's speaking language of, uh, of common sense. You know, not, I'm not saying I'm a smart guy, but I have common sense. And, uh, if you watch me and enjoy my channel, you're going to love this guy. Go subscribe to him. And hey, man, why not say that uh, Airborne 80 sent you? That'd be cool. So that way I can get more than, uh, you know, the two subscribers that I have. A uh, little guilt trip for you guys. But um, I I have been receiving things, you know, via text message from friends all over the country that are in law enforcement. Not that that matters, but this is who I, my friends are. Law enforcement, ex-military, current military, whatever. And they're sending me open source stuff that you guys probably have seen but uh it gets me thinking and little clips that are now i think available on the internet um and i just wanted to comment on some of them you know i don't want to bash Th those that have been with me for a long time know it's super uncomfortable for me to talk shit about our government when it comes to federal law enforcement um why because I, my whole career was law enforcement. I did a career with LAPD, and then I did 12 years as a, a federal agent with an OIG. That's not some sexy job. That's basically a criminal investigator. And then I became firearms and tactics instructor for an OIG, an Office of Inspector General in Washington, D.C. But that allowed me to have some experience with the Secret Service I'll get into in a second. Um, and I can't not notice some things. And as, as uncomfortable as it is, you know, my brain is hardwired and has always been hardwired uh, to believe that the police are by and large the good guys. I mean, I are one, you know. Yeah, there's always going to be bad apples, but the police, look, a, a country cannot exist, a free country, without uh, a trustworthy law enforcement apparatus, both federal and state. And it's been just gut-wrenching and heartbreaking and all the other shit to, that I could say to, to come to the realization that the FBI isn't what it used to be. It's just not. Um, and that goes right down the line with all of the other agencies, the ATF, all of these. You know, and I'm look, I'm 62 years old now, and a couple, three, four years ago, I realized, wait a minute, Mike. These aren't the same caliber of people. You know, as you get older, younger people come in behind you and they have different experiences and different mindsets. And these people were raised and educated in a woke America. You know, the, I guarantee you there are Secret Service and FBI agents that will not be able to tell you definitively how many genders there are. They just won't be able to tell you because they won't, they, they won't break the party line or they truly believe that there's 25 genders, whatever. But these are the people that our law enforcement and, it, and our judicial system too, same thing. These people were educated and brought up differently. Um, yeah, okay, boomer. Yeah, you know what? The fucking boomers, at least we knew and know how many goddamn genders there are. Oh, you're a homophobe. I've covered that in other videos, man. Not bowing down to pressure to give accolades to fantasy is not doesn't make you any kind of a phobe at all. 
It just makes you a realist. And my mantra has always been that truth is supreme, no matter what the topic is. Truth will be truth and will always be truth, no matter how many people try to say otherwise. Um, so with that in mind, I am not prepared to insinuate that, that the uh, Secret Service or any other federal agency was involved directly. But I'm not naive enough to, to think that this hasn't happened before. I mean, JFK, MLK, uh, Bobby, there's, there's, look, we know historically, as painful as it is to admit, that our government at one time had plans to, to kill its own people in Florida and blame it on the Cubans, you know, to justify a military action. That's open source stuff. You can look that up if that's news to you. So it hurts me to, to even say this shit, but truth is supreme and truth is truth. So while I'm not prepared to, although I do know that, that under Obama, our federal agencies, law enforcement agencies, were pretty much gutted of anybody that was considered a conservative. They, they just got pushed out. All of the, the upper management were, were, you know, total Obama bots that believed in all this bullshit. And this is why you have, you know, Comey doing the shit that he did. And these people who have no sense of, of right or wrong. It's just the Sololinsky. It's just the fight. You know, it's the win at all cost. And if that man is the guy that we don't like and we were told not to like, then it doesn't matter. There's no, there's no dishonor in bending or breaking rules. And that, that is, that's the beginning of the end of a country. Um, so while I say, you know, I don't know what's going on with the Secret Service, but I can tell you what I saw and what you saw. And I'm not going to go into the, I'm sure there's a million tapes or tapes, a million YouTube uh, videos where people are talking about the tactical or uh, fuck ups or whatever that the Secret Service did. I don't, I don't want to bash them, but I do want to see some obvious stuff that's probably been said a million times. Look, um, I, I can tell you this experience. So I was in the National Guard here in Virginia, and one time Obama was flying into a military base, <clears throat> and for whatever reason, and so they had, there were certain people that were selected that were going to be standing by the president, and of course they had to go through background checks, you know such as they were, no live ammunition, no weapons, everybody, blah, blah, blah. And then they, you know, they were all happy to be around Obama. I wasn't one of them. Um, but I watched the preparation in the days leading up to it. And in this particular case, it was a military base and there were open spaces, you know, hundreds and hundreds of yards where at the other end of, you know, 500 yards was maybe a tree line. And I remember that the Secret Service lined up buses, a bunch, you know, 15, 20 buses so that the line of sight was blocked. They, they, you know, the Secret Service operates in, in con, at least back then they did, in concentric, like, circles. So the smaller circle is going to be around the protectee. The, the, the next ring of protection is going to be maybe the stage. The next ring will be the, you know, the venue. And the next ring will be the outer venue. And then and they go so forth and they spread out all the way out to, you know, freaking, you know, homeless guys in the streets that are actually agents watching for who's coming and going. That kind of shit. So that it's a security 101. And the very first aspect of any kind of a, uh, um, a security detail that goes out and does a, uh, uh, well, I don't even, I can't remember what the term is, but when they go out and they, the, the pre security team that goes out ahead the advanced team is to identify high ground and to control high ground physically make it impossible to get access to the high ground or put agents on the high ground but for sure have people watching the high ground and in this case in in uh, where Trump was there were like five buildings that were could be considered high ground it's not a whole lot How did somebody not see this dude crawling up there with a gun? And of course, you've got civilian, a civilian who's been making the rounds saying, hey, we saw the guy climbing up there with a gun. We tried to get the police's attention. Excuse me, that's that stress, man. And uh, we were pointing over there so that the Secret Service spotters could, you know, see where we were pointing. But they didn't see that. And I just saw this morning, somebody sent me a clip. There was somebody was filming the Secret Service snipers, that the sniper that returned fire. And I, I guess took this dude out. 
you know, I am less than impressed, you know, and I ain't no fucking, you know, security guy. Like, I, I, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm an expert in any of this. But when the first shot was fired, that sniper, the Secret Service sniper, looked like he, like the last thing on his mind was that he might have to actually pull the trigger. I mean, he jumped back and was, you know, he was flustered. And man, I expect more for the, for the secret, from the Secret Service. I expect more. I expect that when you got two snipers and a spotter or a spotter and, and a sniper, when you got them up there, that these are the best of the best and that they're fucking fully mentally prepared to do what has to be done and not be fucking jumping back and then, oh, I'm, there's shots being fired. Because it just takes that one fucking bullet to end somebody's life. And we see what happened, you know? And, um, you know, prayers out to the family of, of, the, of the guy that, that lost his life. You know, we almost lost Trump. And as far as I'm concerned, that right there is the monumental failure. The Secret Service had one mission and one mission only, and that is to protect the president. And he took a bullet to the ear, which was a cunt hair away from hitting him and ending his life. And in my mind, that's a failure. That's a failure because of slop at the at the the best case scenario, it's the sloppiest fucking security work I've ever seen in my life. And I already covered in the last video. I wasn't like super impressed with the amount of time it took for the Secret Service agents on the stage to get to the to get to Trump and cover him. It looked pretty fucking sloppy to me, man. It took a long time, and it just looked bad. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, man. You security experts tell me if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, I don't think I am. Uh, and as far as them not having that... I mean, the fucking building where the guy was was literally like out in front of the sniper and maybe a little to the left or right. How the fuck did they not see this? How were they not... Were they looking at women? Were they not paying attention? What happened? Now, there's the worst case scenario, what all that other people talk about, um, I'm not ready to believe that, but like I said in the beginning, you know, the Secret Service and these federal law enforcement agencies are not comprised of the same mindset that they were when I was a young dude. It's different. Back then, man, they wanted people that were ex-military and blah, blah, blah. Now they look at, come on, man, if, you, if you're if you a, a veteran, and especially a combat veteran, these liberals and these people in charge of the, the you know, the, the uh, mainstream media and the government... Look at you as a threat. I, somewhere, wasn't there a fucking report released by the federal government that these were signs to look for for a potential domestic terrorist was, you know, veteran stickers on the back of vehicles, flags, the American flag, all of the shit that any fucking proud American, an American who, who, who loves his country, his or her country, all of the things that we have and display and wear, to them, that makes us a potential domestic terrorist. It's insanity. So, yeah, that was that. Um, you know, we're, talk, we're talking about the deep state. This guy, uh, Jesse on fire, was talk, he, I paused the video right when he was getting ready to talk about the deep state. Look, years ago, I did not believe in that shit. I thought it was all conspiracy shit. I don't believe that anymore. Um, there's been too much evidence, and people that don't want to face reality are ostriches with their head in the sand, and uh, that's dangerous on many levels. So... Another thing that was interesting and a little depressing to me was um, I, as many of you know, I had a ton, a ton of subscribers on YouTube and on Twitter and blah, blah, blah. And under Obama, all of those channels got killed. Uh, so uh, I've been winging my way slowly back into this shit. But when uh, Elon took over Twitter and changed it to X, which I'm not comfortable saying for some reason, I still call it Twitter. Uh, I couldn't believe that. It was like, wow, free speech. You can post anything. So I, t I tried it. I posted a couple of really graphic things and, you know, guys getting their heads blown off or whatever. And they let it slide. I was like, oh, fuck, I guess I'll start operating on uh, on Twitter again. Same name, Airborne 80. Uh, don't have many subscribers because I'm not that active on it. But I was starting to believe in it. And then I watched Bill O'Reilly. If you haven't seen his first video that he posted after the shooting, well, no matter what you think of Bill O'Reilly, he was spot on talking about the the hate brigades, the people that have been pushing this kind of shit. And what do you get? You know, you call a guy Hitler long enough and, you know, pretty soon people are going to treat him like he's Hitler. And, you know, he talked about Joy Behar on, on The View and how many times those people refer to Trump as a racist, Hitler. The, he's going to bring down the democracy, you know, not, not the republic, but the democracy. He's going to exact revenge. 
you know, it was it was weird. It's like you call a guy Hitler every day of the week for years. And then you pretend like you're sad and sorry when somebody tries to take out Hitler. So you're saying that if Hitler was on stage and somebody took out Hitler, you would be very sad and sorry that that happened? You can't have it both ways. This is the insanity of the left. That's why I, keep, I say Democrats are truly cancer to, to, to civilization in my mind. They really are. Um, so I made a couple of things uh, that I posted on, on Twitter this morning about Joy Behar. First, instantly was taken down. I thought, what the fuck? Did it not take? So I reposted it again, and I came back, and I saw that it was on there, and an hour later, it's back, gone. So it looks like we're losing X, or Twitter. It looks like they're back to censoring, you know? I mean, it didn't violate any of their standards. I put her face up there, and I said, you know, the face of evil, and I put on there about her perpetuating all this bullshit and evil about Trump, and they took it off. It's my dog. So that's a sad, just a little side note. Um, I look, I, I, I've been thinking about Trump's security going forward. Um, look, man, the next time he has a rally, I think it's going to be at the Republican convention. But uh, he should pull in in a fucking Abrams tank and just speak through a megaphone from the inside. <laughs> but, but honestly, maybe Trump is against this, but... The first thing I thought after the shooting was, why is he not behind those, you know, four pieces of ballistic glass that we've seen, you know, in front of the Capitol when there were presidential things going on in the past? Not with him, but with other other presidents. I've seen these, this, this ballistic glass. Now, it is possible, and I don't know, but I, it wouldn't surprise me if Trump was like, no, I want to be with the people and close to the people. I could see that. But I hope that this changes because you can't count on the Secret Service anymore. If they can't fucking see this thing coming... That's like, what, a couple hundred yards away, three, four hundred yards away? If he, if they can't see that and stop it before their round is fired, they're inept. At the, at the, at the least, they're inept. Um, so hopefully that happens. And I often wonder, is, and I don't know the rules, is Trump allowed to have private security? I mean, I bet there's an endless amount of people that are highly trained in and, uh, you know, protectee type details that would love to protect President Trump and could do a hell of a better job than what I saw and what you saw. Um, I mean, you know, getting back to the federal law enforcement, look, how can we, how can he trust them? Our FBI raided Mar-a-Lago and, you know, were prepared to fucking get, shoot people in Mar-a-Lago ex executing a fucking warrant. On President Trump, knowing everything we know about Trump, you go in, really. This ain't the same world that we guys my age grew up in. It's it's just not. Um, I'll end it with this. This year, this election isn't over after the election is won or lost. It truly doesn't matter what, in, in terms of the safety of your family. If Trump wins, and I believe he will win, this shit's not going away. It's going to amp up because the the people, the Pelosi's and the Schumer's and all these multi-gazillionaires, uh, the, the Clintons, the people that, they're warmongers. They need war to make money because all their investments in fucking whatever, bullet manufacturers and fucking who knows. But these people have their way of life that means if you go into politics, you come out a multi-gazillionaire. And Trump isn't like that. He is the antithesis of these people. And he, they are not going to just sit by and let him shit on their party and stop their freebies and all their, their generation of fucking, you know, their grand, great grandkids to become millionaires because they're related to fucking Pelosi. You know, but yet none of them has done a fucking thing for you, me, or anyone else in this country except cause grief and cause wars. That's what they do. And this ain't going away with a, vic with a Trump victory. It'll increase. And who knows what these people are capable of. I, nothing will surprise me. Nothing. There's no theory that you could throw at me that I'm going to shake my head. I used to do that. I don't do that shit anymore. Uh, Maddie. Um, sorry. But, but if he, if he loses the election, 
I'm not confident that there's still not going to be insanity. Look, truth is supreme, as I said before, and there are people on our side, for lack of a better term, the people that are Trump, heavy Trump supporters. Some of the Trump supporters, just like, they're, some of them aren't wrapped that tight when it comes to being fed up and being feeling pushed to go do something stupid. I don't know. You know, I try to stay far away from anybody that is into violence. Uh, that's not my thing, never was. And I, I'm not an advocate of it, and I don't want to be around it, especially at this age. But I am not comfortable that the, uh, the pro-Trump people will just take another loss like, like we did the last time. I hope that this country can survive another year, one way or the other, no matter who wins. But on that note... <laughs> Maddie, hey, on that note, I would say, I hope you're, you're prepared. I hope you have preparations in mind. You know, if you live in the middle of a liberal city, you're probably not a good place to be after the election. You might want to go stay with Uncle Wilbur on his fucking ranch somewhere. You got to think ahead. Think about your kids. Think about your pets. Think about your supplies. Think about your medications. Think about, think about, I am so sorry. Maddie, hey, hey, no. Unbelievable. I'm not going to edit this out. This is reality. Uh, but, God damn it. Fucking where's my... <laughs> but, you know, think about that. Think about your, your the safety of, your, of yourself and your family. And just be prepared. Don't be ignorant. Don't pretend like shit's not, not possible. And let's hope and pray. I, I believe in prayer. I believe that God himself moved Trump's head. Whether it was with a thought, an involuntary thought, but... You know, that was a fucking divine intervention if I've ever seen one. And I thank you, God, for that. Oh, what about the other guy that lost his life? Look, I don't claim to understand what goes on in the whole big picture in terms of spirituality. But I know that Trump being alive is so much more important than you, me, or anyone else. Because it's not about our president or our guy winning. It's like the, like the left thinks. Trump being president is safety and security for the entire fucking world, including our own, our enemies. As I said in the last video, whether they're too stupid to understand it or not, doesn't change the reality. The, 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 any hope for peace on this planet rests on whether or not Trump makes it into office. And him making it into office isn't going to suddenly stop all of the bullshit. They're going to make every second of his presidency a nightmare. And try to get them all hemmed up. And we got to just be prepared for that. How? I don't know. I'll think on it. Anyways, that's my two cents. I hope you guys are having a good day. Stay safe and God bless.